today we're going to replace that lavatory faucet and the pop-up assembly. Those are some of the tools that I'm going to use. Plumber's putty. We got my supply lines, new ones over here. The poly. We got a single handle mowing. There's all the parts out of the package. There's a few things you can prepare. I'll show you that real quick so that you're ready. I guess it don't matter in what order you do it in, but. Assembly. You always take that nut all the way down. This rubber, this one's good in a sense that it's got, it's hard to see on there, but it's got little ridges in here that set down inside those threads. So it would probably seal without putting the pipe sealant on it. However, I always suggest putting it in there anyway. Don't use Teflon. Just use some kind of pipe dope or Teflon paste. And put you, you know, a big bunch of it in there. So that when that rubber smashes against those threads, it makes sure you seal it good. Because I've seen water travel it down and around the threads, make it past that rubber, and then start leaking out of there. That's going to avoid that from happening. The other place are these fine threads. Don't use Teflon tape. Just put some pipe dope on it. After we get this installed, or you can do it before and tighten this up a little bit. Plenty. I'm gonna wipe my extra off so I don't get it all over myself. Supplies. This bevel is bigger. These nuts came with the faucet. These didn't. See where those are at? Your bevel is going to point toward the bottom of the supply line or toward the valve or whatever water line connection it has. Because they're going to go in like that. Water line feed side, faucet. Okay, so that's just prepared. We're going to take our faucet. This comes with it. I'm going to put it in there so we don't have to pack it full putty like I normally do. That thing will sometimes try to slide when you tighten this down. Just 
lay a big old fat bead along the bottom there. Then you can clean up the extra after you smash the faucet down or tighten it down to the, the sink. You get another one ready for pop-up assembly. Okay. We're gonna take uh, the lift rod, put it in, put this bad boy on. And we're just going to pick right there at the end to stop it. You can really crank down on this nut. It's not going to hurt anything at all. All it's going to do is ensure it stays on there. Look at it bending the metal and everything. That's all right. We're straightening it back out. So we're going to have that. That's what we're going to drop in. last but yeah let's do that last because we're gonna have to put that back in but there's a, a little plastic white ring in there that stays in there and you push that in and then you're not then this put one side on and then this on and then you clip the other side on. So that's how it should be in there under the sink. I'm going to tighten it down a bunch and this time it actually cocked sideways so it didn't stay on the rod. I haven't really had one do that yet. But that's alright. faucet you can put your supply lines on first and then drop it through the hole so I always like putting those on it makes it harder for them to come off in the future but ideally this shouldn't need to be removed for another 25 years maybe longer if it's taken care, taken care of socket in it so that will tighten those up it's just a harder to get up under there grab those loosen or tighten those all while I'm trying to get the camera in there so you can see it 
but this tool is a rigid and I got it at Home Depot. That takes place of a, a basin wrench. You'll see it'll go on there and grab that nut. And if your old faucet has ouch, then wing nuts on the bottom holding it down. You can either use this side or you can pop it out and use the side that looks like that. But it's the nut that holds this faucet down. side you take off first. I've already shut the main down so that I didn't have to tighten these valves. But these valves shut off clockwise. If they won't turn, you can loosen the packing nut right here. Put this nut right here. My channels are on backwards, but this would be the nut you would uh, unturn or loosen and it would go counter clockwise and then loosen it just a little bit so that this knob will turn so yeah these are stiff I don't know, like I said I shut the main off so I didn't have to deal with the valves now let's see if I can take this apart without getting my camera all wet Ooh, not looking good so now I'm going to move over here to the hot side which is a little hard for you to see but I'm taking the nut off at the valve. Same thing, we got a bunch of leakage. I should be able to loosen these up by hand. So now, bear with me. I'm going to move you over. Sometimes they're not. I've had to melt these nuts off before because the faucet was brass. And there was too much corrosion on them to get them off. So I had to reach up and narrow the torch and heat them up enough that they become soft and then come over on the other side. Hold the faucet off. We can pull it up.
do that would be manageable. So I'll just set and hold it over. I get this one's tight. Luckily, the faucet body is plastic, so these shafts are plastic as well. Okay, now we're going to go down here and take off the pop-up assembly. these off before too. If you can't get the top unloosened, then you take this down as far as you can and then go in there with your sawzall blade right in between here and then the whole thing will pull up. If it's still seized up in there because I'm going to use silicone or something so they, after you cut it you can smack on that piece and it'll push up. And normally you don't have to worry about damaging the sink. This piece isn't necessarily needed to take off, but it makes it easier should I have to spin some of the stuff inside there to get it off. Okay, now I'm going to loosen the extension tube and the top of the trap. When I loosen the top of the trap, my purpose is going to be to try to push this down because normally it will and then we have enough play that we can pull down. Either way this will drop inside there and give us a little bit of leeway. Drop it well enough. 
off without disconnecting my trap. So that would drop out. Okay. Faucet's been removed. Just try to clean this up a little bit. this up through the bottom.
This is one of the nuts and a plumbing system that provided it's a metal pop-up assembly. You can really crank down. I think that was three or four. to really crank down on, but this is a good solid sink. You can see that rubber is well smashed. Okay. And then we're gonna, we can pop the trap loose or twist and turn and manipulate it. We may have to reseal it. Let's try to get it turned some more. Because it's plastic pipe, we're going to put some uh, pipe dope on there to help prevent it from leaking when it expands and contracts to the hot cold water. That ferrule goes on the same way as the one on the locked water lines, the thin side down, the bevel at an angle like that. You, know, you want it at this type of angle so that it, it would set down inside there because it's going to smash in here to create our seal. these threads because no matter how much pipe dip you got on there it ain't gonna make your seal if that ferrule is bad you can use Teflon right there if you wanted to but pipe dope's just gonna be that much better seven sixteenths so we're gonna put this face up then this and then the nut that's what's gonna anchor our faucet to the sink tricky part because of that but I always suggest grabbing the nut and the extension and one main end and then that bracket and the other if you have to you can grab the supply line nut while well, you're putting that on. Sometimes it's hard to line that bracket up up there in a manner that it's center. But if you can center it, that is the best way to go. Lightly. 
ever so slightly tight. We'll get on top to see how your faucet looks. Whether or not it's center. If you tighten this nut down too far, you'll buckle the top side of your faucet with the trim. So you want to get it nice and snug with channel logs once you get it up there. Make sure your faucet's where you want it at. Try to make sure that uh, your aerator looks like it aims to the center of the drain. Those threaded bolts do come off of the faucet. Sometimes it's easier to start everything and then screw the whole thing up into the faucet. Some brands We'll have a flathead on the bottom side of that bolt so that you can take that bolt off. And I'm talking about the bolt that has our mounting brackets on it, the one that we're tightening down right now. Um, how far you tighten it down typically normal, normally depends on how thick your sink is. Most of them are all about the same, so I barely got threads showing right there, and it's plenty tight enough. Um, dropping the supply lines the rest of the way. I'm going to get a measurement to about right here, right at the bottom of here, about where the supply line is going to stop when I push it in. slightly. I thought I had that one wrong, but now sometimes you'll have to bend the line coming, the copper line coming from the faucet over a little bit, depending on where your uh, where things line up. I normally always suggest starting this nut first when you're doing a supply line because these threads are easier to cross thread. But because it's a brand new installation, installation. See this one over here, we're gonna have to bend the supply line up top over a little bit, and then swing this one back over so it lines up with the valve. If you don't get that bend in it and then cut it, it's gonna end up being short. And heck, cut long enough if you have to trim it up better than to cut long and trim it up than to have to uh, replace it because it was too short. Hand tight. And a lot of times you can get away with you know three turns and it'd be good enough to seal. I'm just gonna go on feel. Seven, not full, full turns, but one, two, three, four, six, eight, eight. That's about 
10. But either way, all that stuff there is going to be good. ways to do the pop-up rod. We're going to have to pop it out again to adjust our uh, actual pop-up. But when I put it in, we get it started. Put it as far down. Oh yeah, a whole new faucet. It'd be looking all kind of good. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one should be in here for a number of years. Thank you so much. No, no problem at all. All the way down, find the hole that it lines up best. Remember, start your clip. You can put it on the back side of this rod, on the back side of this rod, but it's gonna stay in position better if you put that clip around that rod. And I don't know what the manual says, probably that. I just assume everything I do is right. <laughs> because I'm never wrong. <laughs> That's my way. <laughs> All right, so it's as far down as it could go. I'm sure it could go maybe a little bit further. But the point is, we got it as far down as possible. Let's see if I can get that view. And if you can see that this rod here, or you know, a flat bar or whatever, one of the lift rods, is inside of this clip. So this clip is on each side of this flat rod, so that this don't move back and forth. Because if it was, if this clip was all the way at the end of the pop-up rod, you would pull up, it would slide all the way to the back, it would push down, and it would, you know, it would slide around. At first it would slide all the way to here, which we don't want. So now we're gonna go up and throw the pop-up in there. I need to get that a little bit lower. kind of bouncing on me. So normally when that happens, I'm just like, all right, well, we can either take it apart and reposition it, or let's go ahead and loosen the one we put on originally, which is why some people are gonna say you put it on second versus immediately. sink if you put this on the back some of them will go higher if you put it on the front so we're going to try putting it on the front I'll push it down there until I feel the rod because the rod should go through there 
once I feel the rod, I'll unscrew the back of it, pull it out ever so slightly, drop, and then push it in. So if this stuff starts dripping, you want to see if it's coming from that nut that we loosened. If it's coming from here, if you're not sure, run your hand around it and see if you got shininess on your finger. If you do, if it's dripping, you ram your hand all the way around that and it's dry, then you know it's not up there. It has to be one of those two. If everything looks good. I always suggest using toilet paper to dry up a little bit of moisture around this stuff to make sure you get every bit of it. Sometimes towels won't pull all the moisture out. But uh, that's it. Well, I hope uh, that helped you. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you might like some of the others. Check them out. Remember, plumb smart. It's better to be plumb smart than plumb dumb. If the video was helpful, like it, subscribe to it. I try to upload them all the time. Check out some of the other videos you might like those as well.